Hello, and welcome back to the Calm and Connected podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and I wanted to take a few minutes today to address a question that I get asked a lot, and that's about how to start the discussion of coping skills with kids. How do you start having a conversation about what coping skills are? What do they mean? How do you figure them out? How do you even start that conversation with kids? And I find that when we are talking with kids about their own stuff, with their their own behavior, their own feelings, their own challenges, sometimes it's really hard to start that conversation. It feels a little bit too much and overwhelming for kids. So one thing that I find kids respond well to, especially if they're feeling overwhelmed by that conversation, is to actually start by talking about characters in TV and books and movies. It's kind of a natural way to start talking about different feelings and how people deal with them because we can use the examples from these characters in TV and books and movies. So for example, for little ones, I really love using Mo Willems books. So there are some amazing books in his series of books. So I love um, Pigeon and I love Elephant and Piggy. Um, The characters are cute and engaging and funny, but what's interesting is that they have a lot of big feelings. Everybody has a lot of big feelings in those books. So I think in particular about Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Pigeon has a lot of big feelings in that book, and it's a great starting point to start talking about what Pigeon might be feeling and what he could do when he's experiencing those big feelings. It's a great jumping off point. Those books are funny, and it just is can be an engaging conversation to talk about, oh gosh, look at how mad Pigeon is getting. So... That's why I love using those sorts of books. And then there's lots of TV shows I think about, especially for littles, that can be really helpful to start having conversations about feelings and how to manage them. So I think about Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. I think about um, Peg Plus Cat, all sorts of PBS shows that are available. It's a lot easier when we point out what characters are feeling or invite our children to point out what the characters might be feeling and what they do with those feelings and how and maybe what they could have done instead of what they did do. So I love to be able to use books and um, TV shows for little kids, but then it can also work for the bigger ones. So I read a lot of books and I especially read young adult literature because it helps me understand what my kids might be thinking and feeling, um, what the stories are that they're being pulled to. I just, it makes, helps me understand kids more. So I like to read a lot of kids books, but in doing that, I actually get a chance to find opportunities where I can start exploring coping skills with kids or sharing experiences or sharing times where I found um, that characters are using coping skills. So for example, I have read The Mysterious Benedict Society. um, And um, in the first Mysterious Benedict Society book, Mr. Benedict, we find out that he has narcolepsy. And one of the things that can trigger his narcolepsy is big emotions. So he discovered that green plaid has a soothing effect on him. So that's a great starting off point. That's a great jumping off point to start the conversation about how do you deal with it when you have big emotions? What are things that soothe you? So I love being able to use those examples, call back to those examples when I'm working with different kids. Um, I use Harry Potter all the time as examples too. There's lots of examples of coping skills in Harry Potter as well. And then in terms of TV, I really find whenever I'm watching shows, I'm always finding different coping skills. Whatever the show is, I'm looking to see whether people are using their coping skills or not using their coping skills as a way to sort of build those examples that I can use with students that I'm working with or clients I'm working with. So one show I was watching recently was Atypical on Netflix. And so in season two, episode six, one of the main characters, Sam, he goes on a sleepover at a friend's house for the first time and he is nervous and he's a little bit uncomfortable. And so what he does is he takes his tortoise food with him as a sort of transitional object to help him stay calm when he's in a different space um, overnight for the first time. So I like to use that as an example. And also in that episode, his sister Casey 
um, is helping out a friend. Her friend had to leave her house because her mom and her mom's boyfriend had a fight. So she left. And one of the things that Casey does to help her friend is she builds a fort and they read scary stories together. So great way to start talking about the power of distraction um, and how that can be a useful coping skill as well. So I've started to collect these and I have started to create a list that professionals and family members can use so that you can start these conversations about coping skills with kids in a more natural way, in a way that doesn't feel as awkward or weird. Um, and in fact, this is going to be one of the sections in my new resource that I've been creating called the Coping Skills Hub. This is something I've been wanting to create for a very long time. I actually had thought about it before COVID and things sort of got on the wayside, left on the wayside, but it's finally ready to put out in the world. And I'm super excited to tell you all about it. So it's a resource library and a community designed to help you teach coping skills to kids. One of the main parts of the coping skills hub is the resource library, which I've broken down by coping style with explanations for each coping skill. Plus some coping skills have videos that kids can watch, videos for you to watch, downloadable PDFs, PDFs that you can use as fillable PDFs so that you can use these in schools, in your practice, or in, in your home. I'm going to be adding new resources every month into each coping style so the library will continue to grow over time. In addition to the resource library, I've also created an expert tips section um, where you'll get access to webinars and interviews that I've done where I share coping strategies, but there are also short clips of other experts speaking like Natasha Daniels, Don Hebner, Katie Hurley, and Jennifer Cohen Harper, and they share their wisdom and ideas to help support the kids in our lives. And I will be adding more to this each month as well. So not only do you get the resource library and these expert tips, but then you also get this private community area because I know, and you know, working with and raising kids is hard and having a community of like-minded people who will support you and encourage you is so much better to get through it all, right? So in this space, this is a place where we can ask questions and we can share wins about things that have gone really well so that other people can benefit from that. So I've also created in that section a space where we can all add to different coping skills that we see in TV, in movies, and in books that we can so that we can all benefit from sharing these examples. In addition to that, I wanted to have a time where we are going to meet regularly. So I have a Q&A call set up for both families and then one for professionals where you get to ask any questions and we can all sort of jump in and help you figure out how to best support you in the issues that you're having. And even if you can't attend, you can submit a question and then we will answer it and then it'll be available for a replay in the hub. And then we'll also have group calls. So we'll have, again, one for professionals and we'll have one for families raising kids So where we can discuss things like social and emotional learning, where we can discuss um, anxiety about going back to school, where we can discuss um, stress around exams. So you can post suggestions for ideas that we can discuss during these group calls. And again, these will also be recorded and available in the hub to watch later. So if you want to learn more about the hub, visit hub.copingskillsforkids.com and it opens today. I'm so excited. So if you join, I'd love to see you at the welcome party that will be happening in the hub next Wednesday, April 3rd at 10 a.m. So I'm really super excited. I would love for you to join me in the hub. If you want to learn more, again, hub.copingskillsforkids.com. And as always, if you like this podcast, please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues or give it a rating and review wherever you listen. And don't forget about yourself. Take a few minutes, have a little fun, and have an awesome day.